Hey guys, Toby Mathis here. And a question we often get is, should I start with stocks or real estate? Or better yet, which one's better? And I always just say, yes, <laughs> either one's gonna be great. Now I'm gonna show you the numbers. Now I'm a tax attorney by trade. And so I tend to focus on numbers because I know that stock brokers can lie, real estate agents could lie, numbers don't lie. And I like to look at the stats from a historical standpoint. So if this is percentage of growth over here on this category, and on this line, this is time. And so this is a long time horizon. So let's say 20 years, the chart is going to look as follows for each of the categories. I'm going to start with your real estate, the traditional real estate, which is your house. Everybody always says, oh, but your house is going to grow. It's your best investment. A house statistically is going to grow in value about down here like this. So this is your home. No rents, no nothing. I'm just living in a house. That's about what you're looking at. It does not reach something called compounding or exponential growth ever. Like the only way you ever make money on a house too is if you sell it. And so this is what you can expect, a steady growth over the years. It's about 4% or thereabouts statistically over time. So it's okay. What's interesting, by the way, is that gold is right here along with it. Gold also, whoops, gold kind of follows along the same line. It doesn't ever reach exponential growth. The reason I bring this up is because stocks over time go like this. They do have exponential growth because they tend to, uh, like let's just use rule 72. It's this idea that whatever percentage you make, you divide that number into 72 and that's how many years it takes for it to double. So you're able to start doubling much faster with stocks because they have a statistical growth rate of around 7%, which means your stock portfolio is doubling. Now, here's what they don't tell you. Of that amount, about 40% of it is the dividends that are being paid out from the company. So big chunk of its growth in the stock market is paying out profits. So if you're investing in stocks that don't pay dividends, you're leaving close to half of the benefit on the wayside and you're going to be down here. You're not going to do as well. So you have to invest in dividend producing companies to see the true growth and the great return. Now, if you're any questions on that, by all means, click on the link that, that I'm going to put up here and you can learn more about these things so you can make intelligent decisions. But just know that we want something else besides the growth of the company. If you're just looking at growth, that's what you see down there. If you're just talking about the value went up, I bought something at X, I bought it at $10 and now it's worth 15. That's what our growth looks like. When it goes up to 15 plus it's paying you a dividend every year or in real estate plus it's paying you rents every year, you get to come up here. And by the way, the real estate goes back and forth kind of like this. I think it's a little bit above our stock friends right now, but they jockey for number one and it's sitting up here and this is exponential growth. It starts to curve up over time because you have a compounder in there, which is the rents in the real estate and the dividend in the stocks. Now, if I'm being completely transparent with you, I'm gonna say start with the stocks, even though they're fairly equal. And the reason is this, stocks are more liquid. I can buy a share of AT&T today I could sell it tomorrow and I could get access to that cash within two days. If I buy real estate, I could buy it today. I'm probably not going to be able to close. Even if I was doing cash, it's still going to be a week or two. And usually your closing is going to be 30 days to 60 days. And then if I sell it, I'm going to be looking at the same. I'm much more delayed and slower in real estate than I am when I'm doing stocks. And so I'm always going to direct people when they're starting off, stocks are more liquid, which means if you have an unexpected life event, you know, something happens, car breaks down, lose a job, uh, medical emergency, you name it, or great investment opportunity, your stocks are much more liquid. You could turn it into cash much easier. And then people say, well, what if the market crashes and all this? 
if you're buying good dividend stocks, they do not fluctuate like the rest of the market. They tend to be pretty steady. Real estate, again, fantastic investment. We want them both, but I would go stocks first, real estate, simply because real estate tends to be a little bit less liquid. It's illiquid. It's a little tougher to get back your money. And then if you've ever bought or sold a property, you know that there's agents involved typically, and it's a lot more costly. I could sell my shares in a company, and right now there's zero commissions in most platforms. Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Robinhood, none of those charge you anything. If I sell real estate, I'm probably paying, and I'm just going to give you the, the, the typical, is about 6% to an agent that lists it and the agent that buys it. They want a percentage of it. So you're looking at closing plus the, plus the uh, taxes and the closing costs of usually around 8%. So that could be a little more pricey. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, so real estate's great long haul, a little bit less liquid. So I'm always going to start with stocks. But if somebody asks me, which is better, stocks or real estate? I'm just going to say, yeah. Yeah.